Hello, this is a English video um, for adults um, and basically intermediate to advanced level. Um, I want to teach you something that is uh, originally invented in the UK that we do in many newspapers. It's called um, the cryptic crossword. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of history and um, how to actually do these cryptic crosswords because my next video is going to be based on a cryptic crossword for you to actually try yourself. Um, it's going to be a three part video. The first part is going to be basically vocabulary um, for beginners. Then the second part will be um, elementary to intermediate level to make a, a puzzle like a brain teaser. And then the third part will be the cryptic crossword. So we've got all levels in one video for adults and anyone else that wants to have a go. So basically, the cryptic clue was originally invented by Edward Powys Mathers, who was um, born in Forest Hill in London. Now, he um, was a translator. He was a poet and invented the cryptic clue. So what is a cryptic clue? So it originally all started in 1923 when he invented his first cryptic crossword and he didn't want it to just be words with definitions and meanings. He wanted to make um, more difficult crosswords. So words um, that also gave, um, were, come across as an anagram, came as a classic uh, a, a illusion, um, perhaps incomplete quotations, maybe a synonym, maybe a connector, some sort of grammatical word um, or any other references that you can assign to words. So basically the first cryptic crossword appeared in the Sunday and daily express newspapers from the year 1924. And then later, the Daily Telegra Telegraph took it on, and that was in 1925, and the Manchester Guardian in 1929. And then following on, the Times, the official Times in England, from 1930. So the cryptic crossword is a set of questions, clues that play tricks with the person that's actually doing the crossword. Now, a person that completes a cryptic crossword is called a setter. Setter, S-E-T-T-E-R. -T -T -E a phrase that you could say that's very typical in England. You need not mean what you say, but you must say what you mean. This is a typical phrase. Um, that's uh, put with cryptic crosswords as an advertisement. And basically, it's because there are many ways of coming to the solution, not just by a basic definition and meaning. Um, or another way of um, uh, expressing this phrase is basically, don't lie, always tell the truth, which some of the clues do. So it tries to mislead the setter by using word forms which are understood in more than one way. And it's the setter's fault if one gets it the wrong way rather than the right way. Or, in other words, the wrong end of the stick. A good cryptic clue contains three elements. A precise definition or a meaning and a fair subsidiary indication and number three nothing else so this is like another clue that gives you clues for the other two it's like saying um the colors which color is this blue green red or none of the above it's like giving a it's mislead trying to mislead the setter Okay, so the first element is the precise definition. So the cryptic clue leads its answer as long as it is read in the right way. When a clue is read normally, like the surface reading, 
it's a distraction and usually has nothing to do with the answer. The definition solution would normally match the definition in terms of speech in a dictionary. So speech, the tense form that is written, or maybe even a number. So basically, these are the straight, normal, regular crosswords, like, for example, a synonym, which usually appears at the beginning or the end of the clue. The other part of the clue is the subsidiary indication or like the wordplay type. So anagram, the connector, trying to find uh, an incomplete quote, uh, which gives an alternative way to solve the answer. So one of the tasks to the challenge of the clue is to find the boundary between the definition and the wordplay and insert a metal mental pause then and and think in a different dimension so when reading a clue cryptically um, you would have um, this wordplay gives the setter instructions to get to the solution another way so sometimes two parts of the clue are linked with a link word or a phrase like for example the words from gives or could be Quite often, a typical clue describes its solution in detail and often more than once when it's been determined. So the clue is like self-checking. Here, here are some examples of this. These words are ambiguous. As you may know, many English words have more than one meaning, sometimes two or three. Bloomer often means a flower. A thing that flowers in the springtime. Flower often means a river, a thing that flows like water down a mountain. Lead is the metal. Lead is the electric cable with plug or the verb to lead the way. Novel is a book or something new. Or it could be that the word novel itself is an anagram. Permit is the noun, a license, like a driving license. And permit is the verb to allow. To show you an actual cryptic clue from a crossword, here is an example. So taken from the Guardian newspaper 2002, the clue is... 15D, very sad, unfinished story about rising smoke. Clue one, very sad, is the definition meaning of the answer. Clue two, unfinished story is a tale. Tale with one letter missing, i.e. unfinished, is less the E. Clue three, rising smoke. Smoke is a noun and an object to smoke is a cigar. But the word rising, meaning to go up or vertical, gives a clue to go the opposite way, backwards. Therefore, ragic. Clue four, about, means the letters tal should surround the word ragic. Therefore, the word is tragical. Clue five is eight. And it's the number of letters in the answer. Tragical. I hope you understood everything in the video. If not, repeat and pause the video when you want. Any questions, please type them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.